It's a new era. And it's a new era for college football. Oh, yeah. Because we've yeah. got ourselves the college football 12-team playoff that's coming up. Oh, yeah. And we've got ourselves a format. Mm-hmm. A little, little five plus seven, if you will. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Top five conference champions, top seven ranked teams. Bang, bang. And bang, that's what it's going to look bang. like in the bang, college football bang. playoff moving forward. Poor and Pac-12. <laughs> I mean, is, I mean, what are they? I you you, you want to know how bad they? it is for the Pac-12? They looked at it and said, all right, well, six plus six model would kind of hurt us because that would mean more conference champions. So at least this adds another at-large bid. So maybe maybe it increases our odds a little bit there. But either way, they're still Who's, up who's left Creek. in the Pac-12? Washington State, Oregon State, which Powerhouse. doesn't constitute enough to be a conference. So mm. to Jonas's point, because of the realignment, this is a reason why the college football playoff management committee had to get together, had to, to make a decision, really for two reasons. One, I think the other autonomous four, now that we've got the Big Ten, SEC, uh, ACC, and Big 12, now that we have those four kind of remaining, it made sense to have those four get automatic bids in and then the highest group of five ranked conference champ, then seven at-large bids. So... Jonas is, is saying this helps the Pac-12, or they might have voted for it for that reason. There was more of a push from the Big Ten SEC for the additional at-large bid because that gives them an opportunity to get another team into the college football playoff. So that's the first reason. The other reason is there's this presumption that the TV deal is done because of what was released last week about their agreement with ESPN paying billions of dollars after these last two years of the current agreement. The problem is, is there's some commissioners out there that have said, no, hold on a second. Like, that deal's not done. Like, we still need to decide on a format before we can move forward and and put pen to paper and approve this deal. So this was the next step, too, in trying to get a TV rights media deal done for the college football playoff as well. Hmm. Jeez. It's going to be fun, man. Like I, I, just, I, I tell you what, you know, the first thing I thought about is a lot of coaches on the hot seat. It's going to be a lot of coaches on the hot seat because all the excuses that have ever been lobbed out there by, like, almost elite programs, and, and I'll even throw mine in there, um, you don't get those excuses this year. What up, Penn State? Yeah, well, I mean, don't go. Like I said, I'll even throw mine in there. You didn't have to say the name, you know. I'm just saying, how many coaches will be on the hot seat? <laughs> like it, it, it make it sets up. Here's why I really, really think this is going to be interesting this year is because it really sets it up where college football games now, and I know this might sound crazy, they matter more now. They matter more. Instead of like like back when there was only you could only lose you couldn't lose at all really you, you possibly could lose one time but you really couldn't lose at all to win a national title you had to kind of go undefeated I kind of feel like that's where this is setting up where you don't have to go undefeated but every single game will matter because you're pushing to get into that top that top ranking to get into the playoff. Like you can't miss the playoff. That, that's a that's a pretty it's a pretty interesting take. Like as we expand, there is that counter argument because people will always say, "Well, it just <clears throat> it makes the regular season less valued valued because you know now if you lose a game it doesn't matter." Whereas before, yeah. if you lost a game, you're like, "Up, oh, season's over." I mean, especially when it was like the AP back during that point in time. Once the bull coalition came around, it also felt like if you lost one, you probably were out or outside shot now. So it's interesting you, you look at it that way because I, I, I kind of tend to think, too, like you almost look at the NFL playoff system. Once they went to seven teams on each side, you you also look at that and go, well, yeah, now you – I mean, if you don't make it to the playoffs, like, phew, come on now. Yeah. Like, maybe I, maybe you should be fired. I'll know? say this. The reason why I say it is is because – I mean, I I evolved my, my take. Like, I would have said – I would have taken that side of it. But imagine – you lose one game and people are calling for your job. Like you lose that Michigan game or that Ohio State game, you your people are calling for your job. And and it's it's like 
big time. And then you look at some of these other teams out there like that that are programs that are on the cusp of being elite programs. I think that every single – you're not supposed to lose to teams you're not supposed to lose to. And now you've got to win the games that you're supposed to win because you're trying to keep pace to to be in a top, the top seven, right? That's that's pretty dang hard. That's that's hard to be in the top seven. It's hard. And it's hard to win your, your conference, and you got to assume it's going to be that much harder now that these conferences are expanding with especially the 10 with, with more quality teams coming in. It's going to be it's going to be more competitive. It's going to be harder. So you got to assume that. I mean, this is how I'm looking at it. I mean, can you imagine how much heat you're going to get if you're a Ohio State and you lose to Oregon? It's happened before. Well, is, you know, is that a now, product it, of Ryan Day's just on the hot seat in general? I mean, he's he's on the hot seat, but I I think any I think any coach that doesn't win win their uh, their conference is on the hot seat. But now you take it a step further because there are no excuses. It's like ah, uh, four teams. You can still make the argument like why were we excluded? Like I made I always made the argument when Penn State won the Big Ten. Why were they not in? Like you took a team that didn't win the Big Ten, but the team that won the Big Ten isn't in. You can't make that argument anymore. It's like you can't that that argument is gone. So it's like make you got to make the playoffs. You got to at least make the playoffs in order to be considered an elite team. You have now the the the, the college football has now said if you are an elite team, you'll be in the playoffs. Even if you're an elite team for one year, maybe you're not an elite program, but if you're an elite team for one year, you're going to make it into the playoffs now. It's pretty interesting, man. I, I think it's pretty cool, to be honest. Oh, it's going to be so much fun just to see th- those matchups. And, and I know that, look, we might end up with this, the usual suspects that win it all. It's the, the same typical three, four teams that are legitimate contenders. I don't know. It might but, create some parity. Yeah, man. but like the fact that you're going to get these one-game scenarios where somebody could pull off an upset like yeah. that is, is going to be the fun part about it. I mean, I would imagine, and I think we've talked about this before with the NCAA tournament for men's basketball and women's basketball, it's harder, probably more so for men's because there's, there's been a you know, big sample size with their expansion. But, you know, it's harder when you look at the way this thing's worked out. Now, it's a little different um, in the case of football because at least the first round, for those that don't have buys, you do have home home field advantage for that first quarterfinal round of games. Then after the subsequent rounds, it goes to neutral sites, which will be kind of interesting the way it's viewed. But it's it's still I, – I think it's interesting you bring it up, though, that it puts more pressure on teams – because I don't know that a lot of people see it that way. I think a lot of people mm-hmm. look at it and say it it devalues the regular season because now a team can lose here and there and still make it in. I've also heard arguments of, well, why would you ever play a, a tough schedule if you know you know you can make it in as an undefeated or a one loss team with a soft non conference and soft conference schedule? Now that's hard to do because these the SEC and Big Ten in particular have gotten so big, so competitive. That's the point, yeah. That, like, that's the you're, you're going to have some issues. But mm-hmm. the, the last thing I'd love to see, as we now are down to four, autonomous four, powerful, whatever, is can everyone play the same co- amount of conference games? I mean, come on, man. Yeah, it's not complicated. I agree with that. I agree. Well, like, now that you've play- got super conferences, yeah. I, I would assume you don't have to come out of conference at some point, right? Just all yeah, conference I mean, you- games. Yeah, I think the tough thing is with that is I don't know that we look at the Big 12 and the ACC as the same as the Big 10 and SEC. Well, that's fair. So that's I, fair. I, like, I still want to see those cross-conference matchups because I think a Utah holds up versus a lot of teams in the Big 10. I don't disagree Some of the teams with that. in the SEC. Yeah, right? yeah. We've seen that before. Yeah. I mean, who doesn't want to mix in an Alabama-Wofford game, you know, late in the season? You know, yeah. you, gotta, you still got to Or Troy. There. Yeah, come on. <laughs> you know, I mean, hey, they need money, too, now. Yeah, well, yeah. they do. Money they, making they, opportunity. They didn't get their bread buttered, you know. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> Just saying. butter, butter that bread. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's how it works. Come on, yeah. now these some of these schools, you know, they, their athletic they departments get paid to get that, that ass with. <laughs> oh, they will take Come over a million, over a million to get it. Yeah.
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, to get it. Yeah. No, that's a great point. Yeah. Uh it is uh two to pros. Get it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> two pros. Yeah. Yeah, you just don't want to get you don't want to get Levon Kirkland out there, you know what I'm saying? No, I'm stupid. Yeah. <laughs> you don't get morning the war. Huh. Good morning. I, I found that I found Damn. that just for you, buddy. Yep. Uh, I mean that's you know. I was going through more cards back in the day. I'm a big fan. Is that a, Brady? Is that a Don Russ or is that a a, a Fleer? Like what is no, the Fleer? Uh, yeah, that's yeah, okay. a Fleer. Yeah. I just wanted to make Tom sure. Russ. It actually was a top. <laughs> <laughs> mm. How do people come up with this stuff, man? I don't know. That's cold blooded, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh cold man, cold blooded. So good. It's a dope card, though. You know, that's um, Captain Kirk right there. Yeah, you know? it is. Yeah. 